After nearly 20 years in politics, Wellington had learned from his experiences. In opposition, he took the moderate line. Together, he and Robert Peel, Tory leader in the House of Commons, avoided any confrontation with the Whigs that might drive the government further into the arms of the Radicals. Respect for Wellington was returning. In the end, the achievement of Waterloo stood for far more than his political mistakes. As the Duke travelled through London, his riding companion, Charles Greville, noted a new reaction. It is not popularity, but reverence. The feeling of the people for him seems to be the liveliest of all popular sentiments. Yet he does nothing to excite it, and hardly seems to notice it. One morning in 1834, Wellington was about to go hunting, when he received a royal summons. He left immediately for Brighton Pavilion, the royal seaside retreat. The king greeted him in his apartments here, and asked him once again to form a ministry. The Whig government, riven by internal wranglings, had fallen. But the 65-year-old Duke declared that Peel must be Prime Minister. Wellington had learnt much. Perhaps he believed that the changed political climate demanded a leader in the House of Commons, not the House of Lords. But perhaps he knew that he wasn't up to the job.